Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you have watched my previous videos on R. If this is the first time you are watching my videos, make sure you subscribe my channel for more videos like this. Okay, in this video I'll be talking about the matrix. So what's a matrix? Well, a matrix is an extension of the vector where a vector is a sequence of data elements which is one dimensional. A matrix is a two-dimensional rectangular arrangement of elements as a fixed number of rows and columns since we are only working with rows and columns. As with the vector, the matrix can contain only one atomic vector type. Okay, let's start with simply creating matrix and naming them. To build a matrix, first you need to use the matrix function. Most importantly, it needs a vector containing the values you want to place in a matrix and at least one matrix dimension. You can choose to specify the number of rows or the number of columns. Let's look at this example. It creates a 2 by 4 matrix containing the values 1 to 8 by specifying the vector and setting the n row argument to 2. R gets that input vector has length 8 and that there have to be 2 rows. Then it infers that you will probably want 4 columns such that the number of matrix elements matches the number of input vector elements. Let's change n row to n call and see what's happening. In both these examples are taken the vector containing the values 1 to 8 and fills it up column by column. If you prefer to fill up the matrix in row wise such that the 1, 2, 3 and 4 are in the first row, you can use by row argument of matrix as true. Hope you can get the difference. Apart from matrix function, there is yet another easy way to create matrices that is more intuitive in some cases. You can use R bind and C bind functions. R bind stands for row bind while C bind stands for column bind. C bind states the vectors you pass and sticks them together as if they were columns of a matrix. R binds function is the same thing but takes the input as rows and make matrix out of them. These functions can come in pretty handy because they are often more easy to use than the matrix function. These functions can also handle matrices. So we can easily use R bind and C bind functions to paste another row or another column to an already existing matrix. Let's assume we have a matrix called matrix 1 containing the elements 1 to 8. If we want to add another row to it containing values 12, 13, 14 and 15, you can simply run this command. Now we can set row names and column names using functions row names and call names to get a fully named matrix. We can use dim names argument while we are building them. We need to specify a list which has a vector of row names as the first element and a vector of column names as the second element. Don't worry if you've never seen the list function before. You will learn all about it later on. As I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, matrices contain a single atomic vector type. If we try to use different types in a matrix, the conversion automatically takes place. Let's take these two matrices. One contains characters and the other one contains numeric values. Let's bind these two matrices together in column wise using C bind. Now you can see the numeric matrix elements also converted into characters to end up with a matrix consists of characters. To have a multidimensional data structure that can contain different elements, we need to use lists or more specifically data frames. Okay, that's the end of today's video on R matrix. Hope you've learned something from today's video. If you want me to share more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you.